The scramble for a COVID-19 vaccine is continuing around the world. At the same time, the effectiveness of using plasma as treatment is also being investigated. So what, can, what role rather can traditional medicine play in the fight against the coronavirus? Well, to discuss this, we're joined by Skype this morning by Dr. Tozama Kwebani Ogunle from the Institute of Traditional Knowledge and Traditional Medicine at the Val University of Technology. Doctor, good morning and thank you very much uh, for your time. I understand you are leading a, a project there at the Val University of Technology as part of a consortium of researchers on using traditional medicines to combat but COVID-19. Are you alone in this effort? Who else is involved? Thank you, Pradhan. This is a team effort. It's a team effort between uh, the team at Bali University of Technology, uh, but also other countries that are outside South Africa. And one of them is India, and the other one is Russia. So for the South African team, I was then selected to be the principal investigator. So our aim is to authenticate or to, to, to look for solution from traditional medicine in order com to combat this virus. And when did you start this project and how is it going so far? What are you able to share with us this morning? Um, this project is very, is at an initial phase. Um, however, what we have done thus far, remember also how we were formed, it was so because of funding. Funding actually structured the, the nature of the consortium. Then you will remember that in terms of traditional medicine, this knowledge or the use of herbs has been entrenched uh, with our cultural practice. So where we started was to have a very comprehensive ethnobotanical screening. So this is more about studying the herbs and which region are they are from and what they are used for. So what we did, we looked at the herbs that we normally use when we have cold, when we have flu, when we have um, infection from upper and lower respiratory, respiratory tract. And then we look at those herbs, we look at which of those herbs are common in India, Russia, and South Africa because also we have to be careful in terms of protecting our biodiversity. So what we've agreed on is to share the expertise, but not to um, import, export the herbs themselves from one country to another. So you are sharing the expertise and, 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 and we are really doing a little bit of hard work there to find out which herbs, where they come from, are there similarities in India, South Africa and Russia? Are you able to tell us uh, what are you finding out so far? Uh, for, for the herbs that are common in these countries, we then identify that the route we'll start with is to screen for antibacterial activity. So we look also at bacteria that are associated with lower and upper respiratory tract. So you're talking about the staphylococcus aureus, your pneumonia. So we look at those bacteria. The reason there is because we have a BL2 facility. So it's called a biosafety level two, where we can screen for this uh, antibacterial activity. However, now when we're moving to antiviral activity, we're working with one entity in South Africa that does screening for us. But you'll remember funding is very essential because for one formulation, you'll have to pay 50,000. They do it in triplicate. And the reason is because of the risk associated, definitely, you know, doing this antiviral screening as yeah, well. Yeah, and I mean, any kind of, of testing and, and research is not cheap by any standard. Now, now uh, of course, like the, 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 the pharmaceutical treatments, the, uh, let's call it the, the modern medicine treatment, or it costs a lot of money. But if you're going to go the route of checking the efficiency of, 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 herbal, of herbal treatment, traditional treatment, you also require vigorous testing. Are you going to be doing that? That's very true. It's very important because, as I mentioned before, this knowledge has been embedded for years in our communities. I'm talking now about herbs that uh, help when someone is coughing because that's the angle we started from. Uh, but what has been lacking for, for years is uh, documentation of scientific evidence. So that's where we come in. But we have to go through the process of testing uh, these herbs. So documentation is very important. Yeah, you said funding is a problem and you're going to have to test and test. And for how long uh, are you going to be managing funding, uh, of course, uh, allowing uh, if the funding still continues and the cooperation with India 
and, and, uh, and Russia. How long is that going to be taking place? At the moment, we can't tell. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work because this project is transdisciplinary in nature. So there are a lot of expertise that are required. However, as I said before, the angle we started with is to screen for antibacterial activity. Then it's more like having um, a framework or a methodology. The ones that you are seeing that they are very potent or they are very active, we're not screening them for antibacterial activity. Those are the ones that then will select to screen for antiviral activity. So it's more like selecting from antibacterial activity, then moving to uh, antiviral activity. I can't tell the exact time uh, because there, there's a lot of work that is involved. However, we are hoping for the best. <laughs> Okay, well, good luck, eh, Dr. Tosa Makovani Ogunle. I'm sure we will touch base again with you in a few months' time just to see on the progress that, uh, that you are making because the whole world, we're trying to find a way how we can help uh, one another to treat uh, COVID-19 or develop a vaccine. Very interesting uh, multidisciplinary approach there, including South Africa, India and Russia. A lot of common herbs exist in those jurisdictions and they've been checking the antibacterial uh, properties and now they're moving into the antiviral properties, especially for the upper respiratory system. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Thank you.